Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards, dragons, making games, and I do not like bugs. Welcome back to making tower defense games in Game Maker about killing bugs. Okay, so in the last couple of videos, I've uh, I pretty much finished off everything I wanted to do when it comes to um, different tower types, and I'm going to start uh, doing the same thing with, with bugs. I'm not going to spend as much time on the different bug enemy types as I did with each of the towers. Each of the towers actually got a fair amount of time on their own. Um, instead I'm going to just work on a bunch of differences in kind. So off recording, and by that I mean like two minutes ago, I drew a couple different bug designs. Uh, we already had the foes on the pill bugs. I, the pill bugs are actually like misnamed red ants or something like that weird, uh, for whatever reason. And I just, I just updated the name so that it's more accurate and updated it in code when it's, where it's referred to over here. And I've drawn three more. I've drawn, uh, gnats. These are also called midges in some parts of the world around here. For whatever reason, we tend to call them gnats. Uh, they refer to the same bug. They're like flies, except infinitely smaller and more annoying, if you can imagine that. Uh, grasshoppers. Okay, we uh, these are these are pretty well-known types of bugs. These are um, big green, and they just eat a ton of stuff. Uh, and then there's the aphids, which are small, kind of yellowish green, and anybody who's ever tried to grow a rose bush has probably seen these before and, and hates them with their with every fiber of their being. Uh, let me just make sure real quick that all these three new additions are on their own texture pages. Um, and it looks like they are. These are all one frame of animation. I'm not drawing like animated bugs. Uh, these are probably going to be temporary until either I actually sit down and actually try to learn pixel art or... Um, throw like a hundred dollars at at the internet and see if anyone will will draw a couple different bugs for me so that i don't have to um i'm undecided about how i'm going to do this i may they may end up being 3d models they may end up just staying sprites the way they are now but uh design wise it's good enough for now most likely i'll uh i'll, I'll like interrogate a couple artists friends and see what they think i should do uh at some point in the future anyway let's see can i Close this. This is UI button. I haven't needed to modify that in a while. Let's see. So we can start. I've I like drafted out a couple different bug types a long time ago, and they've just sort of been sitting here in the code. I'm not gonna do anything with either of these spiders and millipedes. Millipedes, I'm not actually sure how to like represent in a sprite without making something that looks kind of like a worm. So I'm not gonna. I'm just not gonna do that. And spiders are creepy crawlies that I actually like, and I, I don't want to just like make an entire game about about getting rid of them. Um, spiders eat all of the things that I hate, so I'm, I'm perfectly okay with having spiders around. Um, that was just like a couple ideas I was tossing around earlier anyway. So we can, we can, we can uh, add the gnat, add the grass hopper, and we can add, what was the last one? Aphid. And these are all going to have different uh, different properties. Let's see, there should be not a space there. These are all going to have different properties. Ants are going to kind of be the bog standard enemy. Uh, gnats are probably going to be fast, but they're going to have like zero HP. Actually, should I call them midges just because that's a less weird word to to see? G N is a little bit of a a little bit of a, a strange word. And also, I think most most people call them midges and not gnats, so that might be a little bit more recognizable. All right, whatever, we'll do that. Grasshoppers. Um, why is pillbug pluralized instead of singular? All the other words here are singular. Um, let's see. So the sprites. Internally, they can still be gnats. I don't care. Just displaying to the user. I, I want to call them uh, midges. Let's see. So internally, each of these are going to have their own properties. Ants are kind of the bog standard enemy. Uh, pill bugs are slower but more defensive. They have um, they have more health to deal with. Uh, midges. If anyone's ever seen one of these, it takes like nothing to swat one of these away. They are tiny, but they, you can't have a ton of them. And they're actually really annoying in the summer in a lot of places. Okay, I have an idea for implementation of, of these things, but um, I'll get back to that in a minute. Grasshoppers. These are kind of big. These are kind of beefy. They also can be fast. 
um, if, if they're like flying around and if they're really moving. Locusts in some part of the parts of the world are like grasshoppers that have been like turned up to 11 um, under certain conditions. I was actually reading for un or watching for unrelated reasons a, a video about um, all the all the many exciting ways that grasshoppers can can like just completely destroy uh, plant life in an area. That was fun. Um, but anyway, you, you can have more HP. These guys could be kind of a boss enemy, I'm thinking, because they're big, they're fast-ish, and they're really, really annoying. Uh, maybe they could do, like, two damage when they, um, when they reach home instead of, instead of the usual one as well. Aphids! These are small there, not very fast there, extremely squishable. Um, it's also extremely common to find just a, an absolute ton of them anywhere you have an infestation of aphids. So I'm thinking that this is going to be sort of a swarming enemy. Uh, we can give you like 2 HP each, maybe 3 HP each. And um, uh, defense, magic defense, I'm really not using either of those, am I? Speed, and uh, 100 is going to be the default speed. Midges, um, did I say there would be? I'll make you 100 also. Aphids, again, like I said, slow, but a ton of them, so uh, they can be on the slower side. We can give you 50 for speed as well, and uh, grasshoppers. How about 150 for speed? How does that sound? Uh, the next parameter is the amount of damage they do when they reach home. Again, I'm okay with everything doing one except for the grasshoppers, if they're going to be sort of like the boss enemy um, of sorts, and the reward. So, how much money you get when you defeat them. Um, and I see two seems to be the base. Pillbug is a little more, since there's... Since there's, um, they have a little more defense. Um, midges, those can be, those can be two, uh, currency for reward. Aphids, those are going to be all over the, all over the place. I'm just going to make that a one. And grasshopper can be like eight when you take one down. These are all rough estimates. Uh, when probably next week's video is going to be balancing these things. And that's where I'm going to look at, like, does it actually feel like anything has, has the advantage or anything's, like, too too difficult or too easy or just free money or something like that. And I'll tone things up or down as, as needed. But we can start with this. Okay, where are the waves defined? Next. Okay, first. Um, added a bunch of new bug types. Ew. Um, committing that change, these are the waves. Okay, so ant, pill bug, ant, ant, pill bug. And it takes like a level, doesn't it? So, suddenly I feel like I should like put these on, put this in a different script so that I can side by side it. Maybe in the database somewhere or something. Anyway, so ants and pill bugs, that's fine. Um... I'm going to go with aphids next. And that's going to be like a, a massive swarm. Uh, the number can be like 40. All these all these things currently will spawn at the same rate. I want to say it's one spawn per second. I do want to change that. I do want to add a, a spawn frequency parameter to the, uh, to the wave class over here. After that, I'll, I'll just have another ant there. Oh, this is level 2, isn't it? Yeah, let's set that to level 1. I'll just have another, uh, let's say, 10 ants uh, at level 3. And then we can have the big bad grasshopper. Uh, say 4 of them, that's fine, at level um, 3. What's next? Midges. I said I would get to their gimmick later, after I have uh, something basic plotted out. And this is why this is why I don't want them to have the different names in like the, the game data and in the player facing side. Um, let's let's put out twenty of those. Level three as well. That should be an easier wave after after having a boss. So if you're picture, picturing like the, the difficulty curve, it sort of um, starts at a baseline, gets a little harder, uh, gets a little harder but in a different way by by like volume over over toughness. Then we have an easier wave. Then we have a uh, a much harder one in, in the form of grasshoppers, and then we drop that back down for something easier again. And then maybe, maybe by this time, um, 
we should be able to have another another like army of aphids crawling through at like level three, and that'll be harder, but it'll also be like a lot of money when you when you get rid of them all. What do they give you? One reward? Yeah. I forget. I forget if a uh, reward is is scaled based on the level of the foe, and then. I don't have any code written for um for like hybrid waves, so I uh, I don't have any code written that would allow both aphids and and ants to walk in at the same time or anything like that. Um, how many is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or seven waves if you if you're indexing from zero. These are cardinal numbers, so that that would really that really would be eight. Let me just let me just kick up the difficulty and see and see what it's like. No, let's go with eight. Let's make the the last five grasshoppers level eight. We'll see just how this feels. If it's anywhere close to anywhere close to okay, or if it's um just way way too easy or way way too difficult. If it's um I I still haven't gotten around to upgrading towers yet, so that could be a thing. Uh, if I just like plop down one of you there and send in a wave. Um, and fire. Fire is a thing. We can, we can set you on fire because I have enough money for that. Uh, we'll send in the next one. I, I do have it so that you can send in a wave at any time, including all at the same time. And I just don't want to, uh, I just don't want to have these things attention divided between two waves, uh, any more than I have to. Okay. Ooh, that was not great. Um, bug spray. I can put you at a crossroads or so. No, I really shouldn't put the bug spray on a crossroads because then it'll it'll there are two places where it can spawn clouds and it could miss, uh, which would be bad. God, this fire thing looks bad. I know there's a lot of towers that I don't like the design of that I've made so far, but the the fire is just easily the worst. All right, let me uh, let me put down flypaper here. I don't have enough money. Do I not have enough money? Oh, there's there's no space. Let me put down flypaper there so that when um when they swing by these two the second time, they uh they're slowed down a little bit. Okay. If I can't if I can't do anything about those, I'm am dead. All right, bye. I also need to do like menus and stuff. So have a have a menu screen, a level select screen, a game over screen, that sort of thing. Um. All right, you know what? I really I do like that. I do like these designs, so I'm gonna just plop down a magnifying glass there, um, and just do some like constant, constant mini damage. It would probably be not a bad idea to to spawn flypaper right next to it. I should probably like add a tooltip or something that that shows how much these things cost. I think it's forty. There we go. Uh, and, and having flypaper in front of this thing will slow these guys down and, uh, allow a little bit more time for doing damage. Okay, so they're speeding up again by the time they actually get here, because these things are really kind of slow as it is, but... Whatever. Um... I don't want to build too many of the same towers, like, right on top of each other, but... This also costs 40, doesn't it? Ah, uh, yes, the, the stream of aphids. Okay, so this is another thing, and I have a piece of paper that I'm just writing down notes for later on. Um, waves should not be able to spawn on top of each other. They should actually... I know it's like a 30-second timer, a 30-second countdown or whatever I set it to, but uh, there really should be... Um, it should be like 30 seconds after the, the last enemy in the wave pops out. Um, send start... Next wave. Okay, start next wave countdown after the last foe has spawned is what I wrote down there. Okay, so this is actually, um, given those couple of things that I mentioned, this is actually harder than I th thought it was going to be. I'm going to run the. I'm going to run through this a couple more times, trying some different strategies and combos um, to see if uh, to see if I'm able to like find something that's a little easier. So first, for example, let's plop down some bug spray there. 
and Flypaper. I'm feeling like Flypaper is on the weaker side since it only lasts, I think, about two enemies before it um before the, the pieces of paper despawn. Is this thing actually on the track? It didn't look like that was actually um. Let's see, where is actually the track? Where's the tr what's which one's the track editor? All right, here's the track editor. So it's not quite on the track. It's just close because the uh. Nope, not what I wanted. Can I delete that? It's close, but the uh the stones the stone pathway is a little bit off. Can I move you? All right, you know what? Not now. We're working on balance right now, not level design. Um, these are 10, right? There we go. Oh no, help. Okay, so I think, it, I guess I deleted the node, but it still thinks there's a node around here, out there. Well, I'm not looking to win. I'm looking to, I'm looking to see if there's anything that's like, Totally damaging. Okay, so Poison Tower is very overpowered, and Flypaper seems very underpowered. At any rate. There's also the matter of the bird nest. That was another fun one. Fun to design. Does that cost 40? I think all the interesting ones cost 40. Okay, that's just like a, that's just like a cyclone of destruction. These things here. These birds. Okay, the birds are the birds are a good tower. I might need to nerf them. Yeah, th that you're just slicing through the grasshoppers. I know there's a cooldown for damage for the birds too, but they do do a lot of damage on each uh, on each round. All right. I'll put the uh, the magnifying glass right there because again, uh, advantage from the the flypaper. <clears throat> So it's it's not it's not difficult. There are definitely better towers. Um, I'm going to focus on the towers, like I said in the next part. But uh, the bugs. It seems like the the difficulty of this um of this game is going to come much more from the towers than that than the foes that you're fighting. Uh, the fo there aren't there isn't too much variation in the amount of in the in the specs of the foes, but there is um. The towers do have a lot, a lot more variation, and some are definitely much better than others. Okay. Well, it looks like I'm gonna win this one because these these guys are just marching to their deaths because the, they don't have a ton of health and um, their sheer numbers are kind of um kind of overpowering, kind kind of being overpowered by by just like this among other things the poison. So. I, I forget if I mentioned this when um, when I was designing the poison tower, but uh, given that the clouds only 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 really they last a certain amount of time, rather than um, expiring after a certain amount of poison has been dished out, uh, that does definitely make them stronger against crowds such as the aphids. So I'm going to keep that in mind. I might. I might change the poison clouds to the same system that the uh, these things use, the flypaper uses, and only allow them to last a certain number of hits, so that they only affect like five bugs at a time before expiring. And that would definitely cut down their utility against crowds like the aphids. Um, okay. Did I change anything? All right. So, firstly, waves. I do want to give waves a, a timing mechanism. So. Class, number, and level. Um, <clears throat> spacing is going to be um, the amount of time between between when things come out. Uh, update. Wave foe countdown. Okay, that's the default. Um, that's the default timer, which is one second. <sighs> There's a couple ways I can do this. I can pass this in as a number of seconds. Or I can pass this in as, um... Like the number of foes per second. I could call it, like, frequency instead, which would be one over the, um, the period. Which I think I'll do, because I think that makes the most sense in my head, at least right now. 
So frequency is going to be uh, the number of foes per second. The timer is actually going to be one over that. So if there's two foes per second, the timer should be one half second uh, as the countdown. Uh, self dot frequency like that. And now magically, I have a way to uh, to adjust how quickly these things spawn. So let me actually space these out a little more. Um, just so that the code is a little cleaner and easier to read. Uh, ants, ants can be one, one per second. Pill bugs can be, I'll also make them one per second. Aphids, I'm gonna make them spawn at like four. Four per second. Uh, ants, once again, one. Grasshoppers, you are, as I said, sort of boss-like. So let's space you out a little bit more. Nats, anyone who's a, uh, anyone who who's been at like a picnic in the summer, uh, with a bunch of midges or gnats or whatever flying around, knows how how often they show up. Uh, aphids again, all over the friggin' rose garden, and uh, grasshoppers, again a little slower. So, this should be interesting. I'm going to start, I'm going to start uh, letting my Let's Play instincts kick in and cutting away in the gameplay to where interesting things happen. The interesting things are going to be mostly like specific waves that pop out. I'm just going to, you know what I should do is I should give myself infinite health so that I can, uh, I can not worry about actually trying to win the game and I can just look at how like the numbers, the numbers look with how often things show up. Um... Let's see. Oh, I actually finished them all off there. Nice. The last strategy that I pulled out seemed to be working decently in um in slowing things down. Okay, so you are that looks like a millipede. Actually, millipedes only have one leg per segment, so centipedes have two legs per segment. That looks like a centipede. Uh, speaking of speaking of trying to to do that earlier. Ooh, you know what this is? I am trying to to place this thing down, but I'm also selecting this tower at the same time, which isn't really desirable. I only just realized that's what was happening. That was happening a couple times in previous videos, and I didn't know why. Um, at least I think. Uh, but yeah, I should do something about that. I should not let towers be selected if there's already one looking to be built or something. All right, set you on fire. You guys are uh, you guys are coming out a little faster again. You're just being mowed down by the poison clouds since um. Since the, this, these things can really absorb however many bugs fly into them over over their lifetime. Seriously. Okay, maybe that does look more like one leg per segment because the way the top one is sticking out. But um, I, I do not like I do not like the long the long ones, the long the long bugs, centipedes. Ugh. Centipedes and silverfish. Millipedes I can take because they're slow and they're more importantly they don't bite. But, um, eh, I, I need to find some better artwork. Anyway, uh, the spacing is, the spacing is more what I was looking for before I, before I got derailed complaining about actual bugs in actual real life. Why do you think I made a game about getting rid of them? About, like, bug pest control, exterminating bugs, whatever. Um, these are, uh, these are faux waves. Next, I said I want to. Uh, I said I want to space these out. When can the next one be launched? Okay, that doesn't actually do anything. the uh, The wave countdown is elsewhere. Is up here. This is where um, the countdown is reset every time something else is sent in. Okay, so this is this can happen in two player places. Either when the player hits the space bar, in which case the countdown is actually not reset. Or, or here. So I think here I'll just send in the next one. Actually, you know what? Okay, since there can be more than one wave active at once, um, they'll only automatically spawn. They'll only automatically start spawning. Uh, DS list empty. 
The lone lights start automatically spawning when the last wave is, is finished. Like this. Actually, you know what? Even better. Uh, you only you only run this when it's finished. Okay, so let's step through this logic a little bit. For each active wave, uh, you're going to update it. If if the wave is finished, if the wave is finished being updated, then you will delete it from the list of active waves. If there are no more active waves, you will start the countdown for the next one. If wave countdown is is greater than zero. Um, what's even wave finish for? I feel like I can get rid of this. Okay, I can get rid of this. I can just instead say if wave countdown is greater than zero. Uh, update the countdown. If the countdown is now less than or really equal to zero, uh, then we're going to send in the next wave. Okay, uh, we can get rid of that variable there. We can get rid of that variable I already did. Just to make sure there's no others. Where is it now? Oh. Oh, this is this is okay. That's that that was something different than what I thought it was. This is um. Instead of being whether or not a specific wave is finished, this this refers to whether or not there are any more waves left, and. I can I can actually refactor this a little bit. Waves remain. I'm gonna change the variable name and change and like invert the truth value of it. Um, so it's going to start out true because there are indeed waves left to send in, and uh, if if there are no more waves in the queue, uh, it's going to be false because that there are no more waves remaining. Okay. So let's see. Again, I'm going to uh, let's just send things in. Uh, build a nice, a nice bug spur tower so that so that there's like no more issues. Uh, I'm just going to send things in. Wait for the uh, wait for the the aphids to show up. Uh, the aphids have a fun habit of um of of still being still being in the process of being released when the next wave starts um heh, started them both at the same time the aphids have a have an annoying habit of still being like in progress when the nef next wave starts uh, so i'm just going to wait until the end of this line and see if indeed we're going to wait about 30 seconds until the grasshoppers show up that was actually faster than i thought i did not have to cut away there actually Or ants, or whoever's next. Uh, ants, I guess. All right. This should also apply. This should also apply uh, if you send out more than one thing at once. Hang on, just just because I don't want to actually die, let me just build as many bug spare towers as I can. Fly paper dispensers to slow you down. Magnifying glass for fun. And, okay, I think I actually saved myself at the last minute there. Was that the last wave? Are there more? That was the last wave. All right. I thought there was one more, but in any case, uh, it seems to be working. That's fun. I, I averted death. Um, the next wave only long launches after the... Um, after the existing waves have concluded. Okay. So the mechanics of sending in waves is pretty much, I'm pretty satisfied with that. Um, the midges. So what I have in mind is that they're gonna have like a one point of shield. That's not something I've really done so far in this game, but I'm, I'm thinking of like whenever you try to like, swat a fly with your bare hands or whatever if you're me and you're gross or anyway um and it always seems to escape which is going to be represented by like a point of shield or something uh so that you'll automatically take one hit 
and then and then you'll be down and th and then you'll actually start taking hp damage um even if you should have like enough enough damage in the tower to to kill you on in one hit um that should certainly make them more annoying they're uh, they're really just cannon fodder right now they don't do anything um maybe a a higher level midge could have more points of shield rather than more health or something all right There's only one wave of them. Anyway, let's subclass this. Faux data is going to be over on this side somewhere. Where's faux data? Faux data is here. How do I want to do this? Um, the faux entities are the things that have like their own on hit methods. Entity, entity towers, entity bullets, entity towers. Um, there's a lot of tower types. Foes. These are the things that have their own on hit methods. I can create a subclass of of the foes, which uh, which inherit from from the base foe, and they do a little bit more in on hit or damage. I guess it would be really. Uh, they they sort of extend the damage function. So let's. Let's subclass this entity foe midge. Uh, it can take the same parameters. We don't really need to do a lot of this redundant stuff. All we really need is to access access the damage method. Update can stay the same. Render destroy can stay, stay the same. I'm going to say self.shield is going to equal 1 for now. If self.shield is greater than 0, uh, we can we can subtract 1 from the shield level and we can just stop taking damage. And otherwise we can just uh, we can just do the existing damage da damage function. All right. If you want to do like something closer to inheritance in game maker with structs Um, you can treat methods as variables, and you can uh, you can like save the existing damage method to some other variable and and invoke it later. It's okay, I guess. I guess I'll do it here just in case I um I don't think it's likely that I'll be changing the damage method on the base foe class, but just in case I do, um, and I don't want to have to update it down here as well. Let's see, that's only part of the battle though, because these are never instantiated. Um, entity foe is automatically instantiated when you, uh, when you when you spawn something. So I think I will add another parameter to the uh, foe data constructor. And that's going to be the type of enemy that it, that it uh, creates uh, when it spawns one in. So we can go back to the foe data constructor uh, we can add another property to it. I'm going to call it entity type. It's not going to do anything now. Instead, when you spawn something in a wave, uh, wave, instead of saying uh, foe equals new entity foe, uh, we can say new class.entity type. And that is going to call the constructor of whatever whatever happens to be in uh, the faux data's entity type, uh, which is over here. So I guess just to uh, just to show that this works, we can print out a debug message that says shield. And all right, let's wait for that. Hang on, wait. You know what? I I am the programmer here. I am allowed to to write like test code. I can just make every wave a midge if I want to. That'll make testing a lot easier since I don't have to wait. All right, so we're going to just plop down a generic old pebble shooter there, send in some midges, and we should see some messages popping out in the console. Nope, we do not. 
Um, what is what is happening? Let's start with saying show show debug message instance of oh, just to see if we're spawning what we think we're spawning. It's not crashing. Okay, so they are still entity foes that are spawning. Um, it's not crashing. Oh, you know what? I said it to the wrong one, didn't I? Yeah, that's the grasshopper. Oops. All right, the grasshopper would have spawned with a with a mid a mid uh, level of shield, but we are not spawning any grasshoppers today. So I'm gonna send you in. You are spawning the correct type, and you are indeed doing that first. Um, incorrect type, expecting a number. HP minus equals the max of amount and zero. Oh, I need to pass in amount as a parameter there. Anyway, the logic is working. You saw it's uh, it's taking shield damage first. It's spawning in the correct type, uh, which is good. That makes this fairly extensible, since if you want any other feature enemy types to have any other special properties, it makes it fairly easy to just um, extend the, uh, the foe class and implement it there. All right, I am... Um, it took a long time to get to the point where where things are starting to feel extendable like that, but now that it's finally uh, now that it's finally paying off, I'm happy. Uh, there are it, that's how a lot of the towers are implemented, obviously. Although not quite in in such a generic form such as this, um, you still need to like instantiate the correct tower type and when you click the button, which is kind of bad code, but I don't care because it, it'll get it done. Um, all right. Is there anything else I really want to do right now? I want to uncomment the test stuff for one. That hitting the stop button also killed the other the other game maker program I had open, um, which I'm not using, so it's not a huge deal or anything. But I uh, forgot that was there a little bit. Let me just uh, let me just start it from the beginning. If I think of anything else, I'll I'll get around to implementing it. If I don't think of anything else that I want to add, I'll just end the video. Thank you, dog. Okay, thank you, dog. I uh, I restarted the game so that we can start that over. I did notice something though, and that is that when the bird nest tower is on the um on the top side, or really on the well, when the birds in this tower is on the on the right side of this uh, intersection, it actually gets fewer hits in on the enemies because uh, they're the birds are moving in the same direction as them, and they're sort of chasing them instead of uh, attacking them head on. And it often, although it might be okay with these with these aphids here, um, it often results in um in them spending less time intersecting them than they would when they're flying in the opposite direction and, and sort of attacking them head on. Um, that's just a, uh, that is an observation I made. Let's see. Anyway, for now, I think I won't mess with this too much. If anybody, um, if anybody has any other suggestions for things for this game, again, uh, as always, uh, feel free to, feel free to scream them out in the comments. And I may or may not add them, like the last video, which was the, um, the magnifying glass tower, which was a suggestion someone had. Uh, a while ago. Otherwise, I'm going to stop now. This has been a game over, which didn't actually kill me for some reason. Did I set it to health less than zero? I set it to health less than zero, didn't I? Hang on, let, let me let me make a few commits. And there's also the matter of player health is less than zero. Player health is less than or equal to zero. How did I get 30 weeks into this without actually noticing that? The answer is probably that I've that I noticed it at other points in the past and just like never um, dealt with it. But whatever. Anyway, let's see. I'm going to end this off here. If you want the code for this, check the video description for a uh, for a GitHub repository. Oh my god. This is the point in the recording where I realized that my microphone levels for the last two videos have been all kinds of messed up again. Great, now I'm mad.
All right, whatever. Uh, code repository, video description, Patreon, video description. Uh, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to actually murder my computer because it keeps changing my microphone settings literally between recordings. And the result is the result is what I'm sure my, my voice sounded like for the last two videos with all the static and stuff. This is unacceptable. I don't know why my computer keeps doing this. I don't know why Windows 10 thinks that when I say I want my microphone settings to be this, it just thinks it's okay to just reset them a half hour later. I will see you all some other day. Special thanks to David Key, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Posho, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits or to hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page in the video description to join the fun.